Uh, let's go ahead and uh, appoint him Master of Ceremonies, and that will actually improve his opinion of us. And let's appoint the Master of Arms. Your Master of Arms is in charge of your army and castle. He will train your troops and defend your castle in your absence. He will need a high martial skill to perform his tasks effectively. You can set your envoy to work on improving one of your castles. This is important because losing a castle means losing that quarry. If you set your envoy to recruit Ronin, you can increase the chance of attracting roving bands of Ronin to your lands. Uh, you still need to hire them via the military of you, though. If the peasants become restless, you can send him to suppress them. Uh, this is very useful if your tax collector is being overzealous. So yeah, if you have to use your tax collector, uh, you also want to send this guy to sort of balance out the unrest. So, first thing we're going to do here is... Well, this guy, Harutane, is an elusive shadow, and he's trusting. Um, but he's also got a high intrigue skill, so he might be good for a master of the guard. Um, but this guy's got a 9, so, but he's only got a diplomacy of 1, and so as we see, we get a negative 9 because we don't like him and his low diplomacy skill. Diplomacy skill is basically the most important uh, trait, or skill rather, uh, for determining whether or not people will like you and getting them to do things and negotiate. Um, if you have like a negative opinion of one of your vassals or your uh, your people, they might start to get uh, paranoid thinking that you'll plot against them and so then they'll start to plot against you. So one way that you can raise your opinion of them uh, under your control is to give them gifts, which will also give them an increase in their opinion of you. But uh, so for right now, let's pick Harutane as our Master of Arms, and let's go for the Master of the Guard. Master of the Guard is responsible for your personal security, but he can also use his skills and contacts to accomplish other tasks. His work requires a high intrigue skill. You can convince local guilds to adopt new ideas, giving you the ability to construct more manufactories in your quarries. Uh, to create dissent within a rival clan, you can send your envoy to sour relations between a vassal and his master. And ninja clans can be difficult to contact. This job will send your envoy to find them. Right. So, the higher the intrigue skill, the more likely he is to find ninja. And the more effective your ninja will be. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a double digit. Nine is the highest we're going to get. But he's humble, which means he is going to get... A monthly honor bonus. Uh, that, I don't think that gives, carries over to us, unfortunately. He's patient, and he's also a flamboyant schemer. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that means. Th these things are in the manual, and um, if you if you're new to this kind of game, these grand strategy games, like I am, uh, I highly recommend you read the manual, and probably a couple times. I think I read it like three times but you should definitely read it. Now, this guy is also 40, and 40 onwards, uh, they've got a really good chance of dying uh, from just various things, like they, they can injure themselves, or they can catch a cold, or something. But So he might not be with us too long, but we'll pick him. So Nambuharu is now our Master of the Guard. And we see these messages over here basically just saying what we already know, that we appointed him to these positions. There's a lot of message spam in this game, and one way that you can fix that is to come over to these message settings, and you can basically set the priorities of uh, what messages you want to see, whether you want to see them or not. So, uh, let's go back to our court, which is this button right here. And first thing we're going to do is use our guys to begin improving our territories. So I'm going to improve the castle in Kazuno here, which is my home province. Um, it will limit our taxes by 
So we're not going to get a lot of money from this province, but it will be worth it. Um, you cannot stack your masters in a territory when you're improving things. You can only build one thing at a time. So to improve our village, we're next going to go to Ninohe. Um, I'm doing these ones first because they're kind of like the front line of where my armies are going to be. Um, I will probably just end up doing all of them eventually, but for right now, we'll put him there. Whoa. And we're going to use our Master of the Guard to expand the guilds, a guild slot. Now, they do these pretty quickly, which is good, but, um, you know, they're really expensive. So you won't be able to afford these for a while, but it's just a good idea to open them up early. Um, same with the religious buildings, they're kind of expensive, but they give you good bonuses. So like, the Shinto Shrine gives you a monthly honor bonus, the Buddhist Temple increases your reinforcement speed, and the Christian Church will give you a tax modifier. Now, let's talk about honor for a moment. It's this thing right here is your honor, and it's very important to keep this fairly high. Like, you want to keep it above 25 if you can, because if it goes really low, you'll be forced to commit seppuku and kill yourself, and I think you can lose the game that way. Um, if you have an heir, which uh, we do, but he's a kid right now, he's only four years old, um, and you've got really low honor, you can commit seppuku, and immediately your heir will take over, and he will get an honor bonus because you did that. So, like, if you're really struggling, <laughs> that might be a good idea. Um, I guess while we're here, we can talk about this now. Um, so, we see our character's traits. He's got a five diplomacy skill, which... Uh, is not very good. He's got a 7 martial skill and a 4 intrigue skill. We've also got a wife, Nambu Iatoki, who has got a high diplomacy skill of 6 and a high intrigue skill of 10. So, if you see these numbers over here, this is my effective skill number, and that is because my wife is adding her skills to this, or at least half of her skill. So, you know, she's got a diplomacy of 6, so she's adding 3 to my 5, so I've got an effective diplomacy skill of 8. But, in your actual diplomacy, interacting with other people, they're only going to be looking at this. So, other people in my court are going to be looking at my 5, not my 8. I think this 8 only actually works to, uh, toward actions that I, that I commit. Um, you can have up to four wives, which is good if you're trying to have lots of heirs. Uh, but they don't all just, like, stack and give you a huge bonus. It's, I think it's like the latest wife that you have. So, like, if I got another wife, she would stop giving me bonuses and the new one would give me bonuses. So, be aware of that. Um... Yeah. So hopefully we'll have more kids because the Nambu clan is pretty sparse. There aren't very many people here. And uh, that's pretty important. Okay, here's our here's something else that we can do. If you're running low on honor and you've got a lot of money, you can start giving gifts to the imperial court and that will give you an increase in honor. Now, you need honor to do a lot of things, like uh, commit yourself to a war with uh, your neighbors. So, if we look at the uh, Tsugaru over here, and we look at the Namioka headed by Akiyoshi here, we see that we've got a negative three opinion of him. We don't like him very much. So, if we were to go to war with him, it would cost us less honor. But if you've got a friend, and you've got a really high opinion of them, it costs you a lot more honor to turn on them, basically. So, 
a huge mechanic of this game is basically raising a lot of money so that you can give gifts and support a huge army so that you can conquer people and raise your honor. Now, attacking people, of course, costs you honor, like I just said, but if you give that province to one of your vassals, you gain honor. So it's sort of a cycle, and you kind of have to keep on top of it because you don't want your own vassals rebelling against you because you've got a low honor. Um, I think I think that's pretty much all the core mechanics we talk about right now. Um, let's go to the military screen. Now this shows all the forces that I can raise from my provinces. These are not standing armies. Uh, they're just like the peasants and the current amount of uh, of samurai retainers that I can can raise. As we increase the castles and the village sizes, it gives us increase uh, increases in the amount of levies we can raise as well as how many we can support. So it's a good idea for the first several years I guess to increase your castle and village uh, level. Um, but you can uh, hire a standing army, and that's this recruit retinues thing. Okay, let's look at this for a minute. Levies. Your levies represent the feudal samurai and ashigaru of your provinces. The size of these troops can be increased by upgrading your provinces. While raising your levies will cost you more unit maintenance than usual, you can always return them home by disbanding them. So yeah, that's something you want to pay attention to, and we'll talk about that later when we start going to war. Uh, just remember that if you do this outside your own territory, less soldiers will find their way home. Okay. So, this recruit retinues, if we look at our retinue cap, we can have a personal army of four different units. So, recruiting retinues. Your retinues are your standing armies, and as such, they always connect to your character. You can either recruit troops for your personal retinue or recruit wandering ronin with your own complement of troops. As more wars ravage Japan, more ronin will become available. Uh, ronin, of course, being the masterless samurai basically mercenaries in this game. Your retinue cap is the maximum number of retinues you can recruit without re incurring a maintenance penalty. Yeah, so if you go over this maximum, it's gonna cost you. Your cap is increased by gaining higher titles and improving buildings. Each unit in your personal retinue counts as one toward the cap, while an entire ronin retinue counts as one. Okay. So, let's go ahead and recruit a couple infantry and why don't we recruit cavalry so that'll give us three out of four and uh, I think that's that's it for now um, over here when you click the date it'll pause it and get it to go again and of course you can speed it up we'll do that for now okay uh, exchange hostages with Tozawa Masamori. The Tozawa clan is right here. And uh, if we do this, there will be peace between us. So, since I don't think we want to attack him right now, we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah. But he's most likely going to be taken over by the Kasai anyway. Really early on. But we won't worry about that for now. Okay, I just got my first retinue. So did our friends the Ando over here. Okay, whoa, what what just happened? A new guild slot has been be, 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 has been prepared in Knohe. So, yeah, we can see we can build that, but it's going to cost us 250 gold. And uh, each one of these gives you something different. So, like the spear maker gives you. Okay, well, 